Hey guys, Sam here and welcome to another FIFA 17 experiment today. Another subscriber suggested FIFA experiment comes from that ninja on YouTube who says, do a George Mendes client's team versus a Mino Rayola client's team. And I thought straight away, I thought that is a fantastic idea. I have to make this video. I think George Mendes' team gonna be a little bit better. Just, <laughs> just a little bit better, but Mino Rayola is building up a list of clients now and he is sort of challenging George Mendes. George Mendes has been for a very long time in terms of being agent uh, and I think Mino Raiola is trying to be the next super agent. Can he do it? Probably not. I don't know. I actually don't know. Anyway, thank you so much for the suggestion that Ninja on YouTube. If you guys go on to enjoy today's video, definitely leave a like on the video. All your support is very much appreciated. Just past 20k. If you guys didn't see the Q&A video, you can go ahead and check it out in the top right corner. I'll leave it in the little I section and uh, you can check that out. But other than that, guys, keep leaving your suggestions in the comment section below and uh, make sure you subscribe if you are new around here. Without further ado, let's take a look at the teams and then we'll get into the simulation. Okay, so kicking things off with the Mino Rayola team, um, I decided which team I'm going to use by who the most lucrative uh, client of the agent is. For Mino Rayola, it is Paul Pogba, despite Ibrahimovic being the highest rated player in the team, and even if it was Ibrahimovic, his last team was Manchester United, if you want to go technical, because he's going to be a free agent, but technically uh, his last team was Man United anyway. So if you take a look at the Mino Rayola team, it's very, very good if you take a look at the strikers in the midfield. Very strong team. Ibrahimovic and Lukaku up front, that's Mkhitaryan behind in a camp position with Bonaventura, Matuidi and Pogba as the midfield three. Then the back four is a little bit weak. Tete, Eli, uh, Salomon and Abate and of course Dollaruma in between the sticks. A decent bench there, Balotelli, you got Kishna, El Kaduri, but when I took a look at Mino Raiola, he doesn't have a large quantity of clients. Like he doesn't have that many clients compared to Jorge Mendes. So I think definitely this is gonna be the weaker team, but let's just take a look at Jorge Mendes' team first before we make any judgments. This is the George Mendes team, and as you can take a look, it is a bit more uh, well-rounded, and it does also have a lot more depth in terms of the bench rating. So you got Diego Costa up front with Ronaldo on the left, Di Maria on the right, James Rodriguez in the middle there in a camp position with Pizzi and Andre Gomez as the two central midfielders. Cohen Trail, Otamendi, Garay, and Semedo as a back four with Edison in between the sticks. Falcao, Vela, Silva, and Sanchez uh, some of the players on the bench. So just straight away, you just take a look at this team and you say, well, that is a better team, especially if you take into consideration the defenders, the back four. That's the real big thing. I would actually say that maybe the midfield goes to the Rayola team. If, if we're just taking a look at the ratings, you got the Bonaventures at the 83, but he's the lowest midfield rated player. You got Matt Tweedy at 85, Mkhitaryan at 86, and Pogba at 88. Whereas in the Madrid midfield or the Jorge Mendes team, you got Pizzi, Gomez, and James Rodriguez. And it's really being carried by James Rodriguez at midfield. So I would probably edge the midfield to the Mino Rayola team, actually. In terms of the front threes for both the team, I mean, you got Ibrahimovic, Lukaku, and Mkhitaryan, I guess you could say versus Ronaldo Costa and Di Maria and they're pretty even but you got to give it to the Jorge Mendes team right they just has better ratings there just no doubt about it and then the back four you definitely give to Jorge Mendes the goalkeepers are pretty close though Donnarumma versus Edison it's not too far off and I think goalkeepers really do play a massive part in simulation I think I've learned that 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 is definitely a, a big part of simulation you need a good goalkeeper or you will struggle so I think it'll come down to the back four can Mino Raiola's back four hold on I'm not sure <laughs> just looking at the teams, I'd probably edge it out to Jorge Mendes, but there's only way to, one way to find out, guys, and that is to simulate and take a look. We'll put these guys in the Premier League, we'll put some of the promoted sides in there as well, and we'll have a look at how this ends up. So without further ado, let's take a look at halfway through the season, and we'll see which of these two teams have gotten off to the best start. Halfway through the season, and well, both teams are struggling. I mean, the Jorge Mendes team is 11th. That doesn't make any sense to me. It makes absolutely no sense to me at all. Mino Raiola seems doing a little bit better. Eight wins, eight draws, three losses. I didn't expect either team to be blowing out the league because they're not really super teams. They're not really the highest rates of players in the world. When you think about it, they're actually quite average teams, especially the Mino Raiola team I thought was quite average. I thought Jorge Mendes' team would definitely be top four, but it's Chelsea in first with West Brom in second and Spurs in third. Don't ask me what West Brom are doing in second, okay? It's just one of those simulation things. Manchester City sitting in 18th. They're not having 
having a good time of it either. But at the moment, the difference between Mino Rayola and Jorge Mendes' team is eight points. So despite one of them being fourth and the other being 11th, the gap is actually not too large. It's not impossible for George Mendes' team to bring this back. Okay, at the end of the season, things have leveled out a little bit here. And similar to real life, this Manchester United team just drew way too many games. Uh, not as much as Southampton, it has to be said. Southampton drew 23 of their 38 games this season, which is just nuts. Like, I don't even want to think about it. What would it feel like to be a Southampton support supporter watching those games? 23 draws in a season, but it's the George Mendes team who comes out triumphant at a seven point win over Mino Rayola's team. It has to be said that the uh, that George Mendes' team lost just one game in the remaining half a season in those remaining 19 games. And uh, to be fair, Mino Rayola's team only lost two. So it really did come down to just the, just the sheer amount of draws. Uh, that the Mino Rayola team sustained. They actually performed a lot better than I thought, considering the defense they had. They only conceded 40 goals, which it was the fifth best defensive record in the league. It's not the best to have, um, but I thought that was way better than what they would do because at the top four, the ratings are not good. You have very low 70 rated players. The highest rated was Abate, the right back at 78. So I really thought they'd struggle defensively and do well offensively. In terms of the top goal scorers, if we're taking a look at the Jorge Mendes and Mino Rayola players that are representing here, there's only two of them. One from each team, Cristiano Ronaldo smashing out 19 goals for the Jorge Mendes team, and El Kaduri, who off the bench, or they probably played him as the cam ahead of Mkhitaryan, got 17 goals. Not bad from El Kaduri. Hats off to you, sir. Great performing, 17 goals. No one else made it though. No Ibrahimovic, no Lukaku, no Diego Costa, no one. No one else had 12 or more goals. But that is it guys, that is the end of today's experiment. I hope you did enjoy this one. Um, thank you for the idea, that ninja on YouTube, a fantastic idea. And I'm glad that you commented it. And it just goes to show that you guys just have to comment. And you never know what's going to catch my attention, to be honest with you. This was just a comment that I got just yesterday. Um, it just came up in my notifications and I'm like, okay, I have to do that. It's such a fantastic idea. It's not always the ones that are the most well liked, although I do take a look at them as well. So definitely leave a like on the comments that you, you think you want to see those ideas or you think that would be an entertaining idea as well, because it definitely does help. But sometimes I just pick things just randomly. They'll just, it's just the most recent comment and then I'll just pick it randomly because, hey, it's a great idea, no? That is it for today's video, guys. Like I said before, I really hope you did enjoy this. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe if you are new around here. But I don't want to waste any more of your guys time so thank you so much for tuning in as i said before i hope you did enjoy today's video i hope you had a good day i will see you guys in the next one very soon keep it real